Hello guys, PC Geekish here, and welcome to my Kerbal Space Program tutorial, part 3. Now, you'll notice I'm starting to um, lower down my voice a little because I'm recording in the middle of the night and it'll be suck for my parents to hear. Hey, what's up guys, PC Geekish here. Uh, in the middle of the night where they're sleeping, so yeah, I want to be as quiet as possible. And I haven't been making videos in a while because I've been busy with tests, schools, rocketry, NASA stuff. Okay, that's a lot of stuff I've been busy with, so. Anyways, moving on. Part 3 of this tutorial is gonna be how to get to the moon. Okay, or we should say mun. Alright, so obviously we're gonna have to start from Africa. Where NASA is based, or Kerbal Space Center. So, first you wanna start in a spacecraft that's already been in orbit, which is step one, go into orbit. And I think you guys know how to get into orbit. If you don't know how to get into orbit, click on, um, I'll, I have the video in the description link below. Click on it. Now, I think I have better charisma skill if I talk a little bit low so I can think of what I'm going to talk. Because if I talk loud, I sound full on retarded. So, I don't want to talk loud. Okay. I have a lot of spacecraft in equatorial orbit right now, which means equatorial orbit means it's going around the equator, or should I say a zero degree inclination orbit. And I'm surprised I have no spacecraft in polar orbit. And if you guys seen my earlier um, Kerbal Space Program video, I have um, a space station, but then I took it down because it got destroyed when I was trying to rendezvous with it. I was trying to um, get one of these spacecraft to dock, and all of a sudden I accidentally RCS thrust it too fast, and it ended up destroying the solar panel, and now it's useless. Anyway, moving on. We need a spacecraft that's orbiting Kerbin. Not orbiting, but... Not this. It's not this. Okay, it's been orbiting Kerbin for one year, so... Finally, we've got to the moon. Alright. Alright, first... Uh, the very first step you want to do after you're in orbit is called MO MLI. MLI stands for Lunar Orbit. I mean Lunar Transmunar Injection. TMI. My bad. Not MOI. We're not at the moon. Okay, let's do TMI. All right, TMI is ready. Now you might ask, why do I have mechanical jet? That's cheating, or that's autopilot. Now the reason I have this is because I have um smart ass. It actually helps my job much more easier, and that's the reason why. I don't, even, I don't even know how to use the others. Like orbital operations, I know this one. You could go to the moon and stuff, but I don't really use it. I think it's gonna be a little complicated. And there's this ascent and landing autopilot thing, which I learned how to use the landing thing, but not the ascent thing. It's kind of difficult. Um. Anyways, okay, let's go to our map. S step number two is coming up. Now, as you can see, I am orbiting anti-clockwise, and so is the moon, so that's a very good target. Alright, so now you just want to keep on skipping until you at least reach moonrise, which is right about here. I'm just going to predicting. Damn it. Seriously? Alright, good. Gonna focus on the spacecraft. I don't know what's wrong now. <laughs> There's some glitch. I gotta exit out the map mode. I gotta go prograde. Okay, perfect. Then just gotta add maneuver and make sure you wanna go prograde until you reach moon encounter. Hold on. You wanna make sure that your moon periaphysis, or perigee, known in science terms, is low because as low as possible so it makes our job more easier carbon apoapsis one million where is this encounter oh there it is one encounter so now it doesn't tell me it doesn't tell me where the moon um apogee or perigee so it looks like we're gonna have to make an educated guess okay I have to slow that thing down a little bit then. There you go. Much perfect. Actually, 
387 is not that good, not that fast, so that's good. So you want to go aim for the target. Make sure that the red, the blue reticule is lined up with the prograde reticule, which means it requires precise time acceleration. Three, two, one. Okay, as you start to notice, our ap apogee is starting to rise slowly because, as you can see, uh, the poodle, it, it doesn't give much. Okay, so it gives you at least thrust of 220 kilonewtons. I'm pretty sure it's known than kilonewtons. I don't think there's such thing as kilonewtons, but kn. And it requires seven over 800 and a half meters per second of delta V. So if you do the math there, it's gonna take at least about a minute, a whole minute burn, if I'm correct. Approximately one minute. Okay, so it tells you you're in our time. Um, fortunately, we cannot time accelerate. So, looks like we'll be awake for the whole burn. And we have, a, oh yeah, I forgot to mention guys, our astronauts, Pete Conrad, Neil Armstrong, my favorite right there, and Roger Chaffee. Okay. Okay, we have only seven seconds. Six. Hold on. Quit it. Uh, I think our burn is a little bit too shallow. Yeah, we might want to correct that a little bit. Let's adjust that. What have we done wrong this time? You might be asking. Oh, yeah. We burned too much, I guess. We have to, just, like, slow that down a little bit. Okay, then. I guess that was, um, as far as we can get. And, guys, keep in mind that this will not, you have to do some minor course corrections during um during the flight just in case if your correction if your trajectory is not on the line you may correct it in this case everything is going a-ok -okay, and soon we will be doing MOI which is lunar orbit insertion now this is used for the Apollo programmers during the 60s and it's gonna be awesome alright now no, not so fast. Before you start burning retro, you want to understand that orbital mechanics. MOI must happen in perigee in order to create a form of a circle on oval to create apogee, which slows us down enough for the gravity of the moon to capture us, which is very simple. Because otherwise, if you burn at the wrong time, I think, I'm pretty sure you're not going to get the kind of orbit you'd be expecting. So, as, as close as we can get, I'm not gonna make it too perfect. Because we're wasting a bunch of time right now. <sighs> oh yeah, and also I have a landing gear. Do I? Yeah, I might as well just show you guys how to land. Let's burn the sucker up. Nico. Alright. Well, I guess this is as close as we can get is a circular orbit, and like, this is a high orbit, man. If you ask me, it is a high orbit. So let's make some adjustments. Let's go retro. Thank you to Smartass. You helped me a lot. Alright, so we want to make that around 63,000 63, meters. Is a very suitable, is a very appropriate orbital speed. Actually, that's too low. But hey, who cares? Let's see if we actually... Yes, very good. That's not too low for the gravity to capture, to bring us down to the surface. Okay. 
I mean, no, 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 get back to retrograde. I'm expecting retros to be fired. And, and 50,000, we're gonna stop. Watch it, watch it. Done. It is done. Ladies and gentlemen, we've just accomplished it. On the most historic flight of Kerbal Space Program history. Now, of course, this might not... I'm not the first one to go to the moon. I mean, like, I tried doing the earlier times, but... I keep on missing, um, M TMI. Which is... Basically, TMI and MOI is the most important segment of this whole operation. And some people think that you need more than one phase in order to go to the moon. Such as Werner von Braun back in his 50s, he thought that you have to build a space station in order to get to the moon by getting a space plane up into orbit. Hold on, we're doing a flyby. The White Titanium Mark 9. What an amazing view. Let's check it. Check them out. Let's focus on them. And we will see, we will spy on what they're doing. Hopefully. Oh, we don't have any more fuel, have we? We still have a little bit more fuel left. You can see Jebediah and him is a little weird. Where the hell is Alan Shepard? Oh, there he is. Alan Shepard's there, minding his own business, so let's join him. Uh, Gene Cernan. And so, yeah, congratulations, guys. You're on the moon. You're literally on the moon. Hold on. Now, I guess I'm gonna end the video here. Now, if you guys want to watch part two, which is going back to Earth or Kerbin, you guys have to stay tuned. This is PC Geekish, your astronomy. Actually, I call myself the astronomer boy, but anyways, hope you guys have a wonderful night. And tomorrow I'm going to the um, Johnson Space Center for a little quick talk to an engineer of NASA. I'm very fortunate to talk to him in a private meeting and also having lunch with an astronaut next several weeks, which is booked with Leroy Chow, the f one of the Asian astronauts who flew in the um, space shuttle. So, it's going to be a very, very wonderful lunch with an astronaut, and I'll have a lot of questions for him. So, um...